I'm here today to discuss a very important topic, which is how to do an ultrasound examination and obtain good results in a patient that is overweight or obese. This is a problem we are facing every day. It's not particular to a certain country. It's a problem that is present worldwide. As a fetal medicine specialist, we need to know some points and uh, be aware of them. First one, we, are, we have to do a detailed anatomic evaluation of the fetus, because I will show you in a moment that patients with overweight or obesity have a higher risk of having a baby with a congenital anomaly. Number two, we have to make sure that the placental perfusion is normal, that the fetus is growing well, because those patients are at higher risk of having a baby with an intrauterine growth restriction. And number three, we need to make sure that in those patients, the fetal, estimated fetal weight at term is within the normal range because they tend to have larger babies with the associated morbidity at the time of delivery and those require from time to time a cesarean delivery. Now, I will focus on the first point, which is the anatomic evaluation of the fetus and how we can obtain better results. To obtain better results, we need, again, to be aware that those patients, they have a higher risk of congenital anomaly, but it's important to know what type of congenital anomaly are likely to occur in a fetus of a patient with overweight or obesity. Number one, it's the so-called neural tube defect or spina bifida. Their incidence of this anomaly is increased in those patients. Number two is the higher rate of congenital cardiac anomalies in the fetus. The risk is not dramatically increased, but it is significantly increased when compared with the normal population. Then the ultrasound specialist or fetal medicine specialist needs to know what kind of congenital cardiac anomaly are more likely to occur in those patients. is the hypoplastic left heart syndrome, the tetralogy of Fallot, the total anomalous pulmonary venous return, the pulmonary valve stenosis, and septal defects. Some of them are major. Some of them have a better prognosis. Some of them can be seen in the full chamber view, but most of them require the visualization of the outflow tract. Recent research has shown that almost any anomaly can occur in those patients, um, ranging from amputations of the limbs, gastrointestinal anomaly, cleft lip and palate, and um, other severe anomalies. So we need to be aware that the two most frequent are the spina bifida and the congenital cardiac anomaly, but also other anomalies can occur in these patients. The two major acoustic limiting factors are the absorption of ultrasound energy by adipose tissue, and second, the required depth of isolation. In other words, we need to use dedicated presets that are on the system in those patients, and we need to reduce the distance between the transducer and the structure we would like to visualize by certain manipulation. I will show you some examples. This is a patient with a BMI of 35 at 12 weeks, and the um, examination here with standard presets is showing the fetal head, but we cannot delineate the intracranial structure. Um, we um, aim to exclude a very severe malformation, which is holoprosencephaly, and to do this, we need to visualize the choroid plexus. By activating these presets, you can see that the image is much more clearer, the choroid plexus is visible, there is a separation between the left and the right brain, and the holoprosencephaly, the severe malformation, is excluded. Here are the presets that have been activated. The most important one is to use harmonic imaging 
in those patients. Now, how can we reduce the distance between the transducer and the fetus? One way is to use the second hand and to push the fetus, as it is shown on those images, closer to the transducer, but this is usually difficult to do in obese or overweight patient. So the other way to do it is to scan or to do the ultrasound examination either through the umbilicus or below the paniculus. I will show you an example. This is a patient that is examined at around 23 weeks. The BMI is 42. The heart is not is visualized, but we cannot exclude a cardiac anomaly from these images. It's very challenging. Now, by moving the transducer below the paniculus, above the symphysis, it is possible to obtain much more clearer images. Same baby, same position, same gestational age, and you can see that now the full chamber view is visible. The pulmonary veins entering the left atrium are visible and the outflow tract is visible as well. So another approach will be to use a transvaginal transducer that is placed over the umbilicus as shown in this example. This is a patient that is examined at 22 weeks and the heart can be clearly seen in all views for chamber view, outflow tract by using the transvaginal probe and moving it over the umbilicus. Now, there are dedicated transducers that will allow you to obtain clear and sharp image at a greater depth. The matrix transducer is an example, and this is now a patient that is examined at 13 weeks with a body mass index of 45. You can see when the examination is performed with a conventional transducer, it's very difficult to delineate the fetal structure. By using a matrix transducer in this patient with a very high BMI in the first trimester, it is possible to visualize the fetus with more details. So this is a longitudinal view of the fetus. Same gestational age, same situation with a high BMI, and by magnifying the image, it is possible to see all the required structure. For example, the nasal bone is clearly seen, the orbits are seen, the nuchal translucency is thin, and we know that in this patient the risk of spina bifida is higher, so we can even see the intracranial structures with the intracranial translucency that is an indicator that the anomaly is not present in this fetus, that the spine is intact and um, is a good prognostic marker um, in the first trimester. So what I will also suggest is to use information leaflets and inform the patient regarding the diagnostic limitations. I will also point out the relationship between a high BMI and the chance of missing an anomaly. The patient has to be aware that can, this can happen despite all the measures you will take and we discussed in the presentation. And I will always try to document the fact that the patient is obese, not by taking the weight or writing down the BMI, but by measuring the distance between the transducer and the structure that is difficult to visualize, for example, here the heart, and to put such an image in her notes. Thank you very much for your attention.